So, do you know that, that it's been two days since this brand new Pinocchio movie titled Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio has finally come out for this month? As I noticed, it officially came out on October 15th, 2022 in London. It will premiere worldwide the following month. But, just for selected cinemas in each country throughout the world, we might expect this iconic movie. This movie is a very different beast than the 1940 animated movie by Disney of the same name. Although it combines the, pis- the Picaresque elements of Carl Collodi's 8A3 novel, it's kind of interesting to bring it to life. Although it was co-directed by Mark Gafferston, who was involved in the Jim Henson Company, the plot is very simple. In 1916, during World War I, it begins with the sketching of a modern, of a model Italian citizen carpenter named Geppetto, who is a crucified Christ commissioned by the local priest, who has become unfished because his son Carlo got killed by a bomb blast. However, fast forward to a time skip. Geppetto has become a down on his luck drunk who alcoholically decides to knock up his surrogated son for a chunk of pine. This wally unexpected origins scene is perhaps the most interesting idea with gothic relish to that of James Wells' 1930s Frankenstein movies. Geppetto was a master craftsman but Pinocchio was a rust job with nails sticking out of his back and while the old man was sleeping the spirits of Ford gave him his hand work the gift of life. However, Sebastian J. Cricket, uh, who was a talking insect, spends most of them imparting wisdom against squashed to death like roadkill repeatedly and has struck a deal with Woodsprite. He tries to keep Pinocchio the straight uh, and the narrow by going off the bat into rails. Whenever it's going off the hook, he becomes unruly mischievous that Pinocchio doesn't want to be obeyed. On his first day of school, he runs up to a circus run by a stashy twirling count Volpi. But Geppetto comes to rescue him, but he gets killed in a road accident. Hang on a minute! Why would they do this to what I saw? Wait a minute. All I'm getting is something, something, something. Very awkward of what I could have imagined. What can I do to think of it? I don't know what is going on with Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. The whole idea of... Hmm... Let me think of the secret origin story of how it ties to the one from Tia Medstars 3. For some reason... I noticed there's something that felt off with the origin story. If you want to compare Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio to this origin story of TMNT, some guy named Matt Murdock, he, he, he dropped his jar of turtles when a van almost killed an elderly man that dropped a caster that smashed open the four turtle cubs and spit out emerald slime which caused a rat named Splinter to fall into the sewers and they had no idea what they're doing to experience why Rat realised this rat named Splinter wants pretty much nothing more than to avenge the death of his father, Hamato Yoshi, who was killed by the Shredder, who was working with this new character called Hunter Mason, who was a new character created to replace Bebop and Rocksteady, who were noticeably absent for appearing in this cartoon. Well... That wasn't until Turtles Forever when they showed up as new characters alongside Krang and Shredder from the 1987 series. Yeah. As a result of this crazy idea, and why would they stole this from TMNT? Although he thought he was killed, he just got sent to the afterlife by Skeletal Rabbits as overseen by Blue Eyeless Griffin, who symbolizes death. But he can't actually die because he's faking his death and wants to keep returning for all eternity. Wow. That was a funny death wish to think of. I had no idea why, 
the animation is very reminiscent to that of combining Wallace and Gromit with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and Claws thrown into one. Although it may not be that animesque, I learned that the idea of a boy getting killed by some sort of a speeding car who happens to be a puppet in a road accident would be terrible. As I noticed, that's a bad quality. But this film rocks that it's better than the awful 2022 Robert Zemeckis directed film, which sucked in my opinion. But I am going to give this movie a 10 out of 10 because it stays true to the text of revisiting the roots to both of what you saw in the 1883 novel as well as seeing the roots of the 1930s Frankenstein movies. As I noticed, the stringless water had some sort of inexplicably singing a song about the detective's hackles. He's been drilling about a fascist. He's groomed to be an ultimate killing machine. In what they set out to look for him to prove that he's a fighting machine. Just in time for a emotional finale, he learns he has to do this the badass way of what you see in Nightmare Alley or Yu Yu Hakusho or Bleach. It's very awesome. You know what they really say? It's kind of awesome. I love it because it's cool. It succeeds in what the sea beast fails. Because I know it did what I learned. That how Guadalmo del Toro's Pinocchio did. Then what Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore couldn't. Because this one nails the olden days so easily uh, that what Secrets of Dumbledore could do. As I know it bombed at the box office on April 8, 2022, since it got stumped by both Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and the bad guys alongside Morbius. Despite getting negative reviews, this one had positive reviews. And you know what I've learned my lessons about this movie? It's quite easy to fake your own death. If you die young, you'd fake your death, you'd prove you're actually alive. But if you hit the like button, you should subscribe to my account. But I'm going to say goodbye. So, cheerio for now and farewell.